I am not surprised by the mental health status of men. And I'm certainly not surprised by the increasing number of women who are opting for staying single. This is what we are going to talk about today. It has everything, you guys, that many of us are thinking, but none of us are allowed to say, i.e. men fail to catch up and women just met them and now they are losing their power, which maybe it wasn't really well deserved. We are also going to talk about what happens when women marry below themselves. Yes, it's an awful thing apparently to say, but that happens. We marry guys who are below us, intellectually, financially, career-wise, and all that. And here you remember, I want to help you. I don't want to dish anybody. Hi, I'm Sylvia, an organizational psychologist, and this is not my usual content, but it's extremely important, as I mentioned it to you in many of my videos, you cannot do your job if you don't understand the greater perspectives of human beings. And this is what I do. So I look at so many areas because this is very much related to well-being and, um, and mental health um, states, uh, statements, initiatives and agendas. And, and, and the performance of employees, it's really, it is linked to everyone and everything. I have written two articles. I will put them below in the, in the comment field. So, and don't forget to subscribe and like this video and comment on it. It helps because I really want this channel to grow because I want to help people. I want to help corporate folks to make sense of the corporate environment and also for you guys to understand yourself a little bit better, the context. But most importantly, I'm not saying that I'm right. What I really want with this channel to get you to think differently, to look at things from a very different perspective. You don't have to agree, you don't have to disagree. This topic is certainly going to be something that you go like either yes, or you go like, mm. so I wrote two articles yesterday and today about titled women are the baseline for men. And what we are going to do in this video, I'm going to read it out because I wrote it quite well and I don't think I can you know, put it forward in the same way. And I will stop at article one at the end and I will add on a few points and then I go to article two and then explain what is happening. So the first article is really the balance, the men, how men have actually lose, how men are losing their power. And the second part is, is about women and what women want from men. And I'm talking for myself and for my friends. So maybe it's not what you want. Now you remember cup of tea because without cup of tea, there's no conversation, but stay with it. This is, this is going to be a good one. So let's start with article one. Title, Women are the Baseline for Men, part one. Harrison Botker strikes again. You saw the video. First, he told women to stay in their lane. And now he's telling us to step aside. Let me tidy this up for him and for every man out there who thinks women should step aside or stay in their lane. Women are the baseline for men. To keep the balance, men must always aim to do better than women, financially, intellectually, etc. There are two ways a man can achieve this. One, he raises his bar or the bar and constantly elevate himself. Two, if he can't step up his game, he tries to hold the woman down. Step aside or stay in your lane. But it gets worse in the second article. A competent man supports women and together they grow, pushing and pulling each other upward. When one stops growing, the other might stop growing too. When done well, it's a beautiful and delicate dance. What went wrong with men? They say men have become weaker. I say men haven't become weaker. Women have simply caught up because men failed to raise their game. Historically, men earned more, were better educated and had more rights, which gave them the power. They had the advantage because women weren't allowed to play the game. 
than women fought for their rights, entered the workforce and educational institutions, and became financially independent. We leveled the playing field because men forgot to elevate themselves. So if men's strength and power came only from women not being allowed to play, were they ever truly powerful? Now you might argue with my position that men must do better than women to keep the balance. But here is why I say it. We have robust data showing dysfunctional male behavior when women outdo or earn more than men. Domestic violence drastically increases, 33 to 40%. These studies extend to mental health as well, because biologically, men want to feel needed and women no longer need them in the same way. What do you think does this to men when they are not needed? The modern system has taken away from men everything that once gave them the power over women. The government granted us rights, implemented laws, and introduced social policies that protect us. We can take care, of, uh, take care of ourselves because we have jobs. Men no longer need to protect and provide. And even when they do, simply sit back and watch us women struggle. Men have abdicated their roles. And even when given the opportunity to step up, many choose not to. Now here is going to get very uncomfortable for you guys out there. Sorry, but stay with me. It's a very important topic to think about. Where are the women? Where are the, the men when women actually need them? Where are the fathers, husbands, partners, and brothers when the government allows bi biological males to compete against women? Where are the fathers when their teenage daughters are forced to share a changing room with biological boys? Where are the men when the government places biological men in female prisons, allowing them to assault, assault women, women? Where are the husbands when their wives, NHS nurses, are forced to share changing rooms with biological men? And where are the fathers when their children are exposed to inappropriate sexual content and ideologies in educational settings? These are the opportunities men missed to step up and show women their support and their ability to protect when the governments let them down. This raises the question, were men ever truly that powerful and strong or were they only powerful against women um, who had no rights, education or income? It seems they, can, they can't stand up to governments. This appears to be a global phenomenon. In the West, they cannot protect women from harmful ideologies. Look at Iran and Afghanistan. Millions of men stand by while the government controls and abuses their women. And when it comes to fighting, who fights women? Who, fight, who is fighting against biological men entering women's sports? Women, like Riley Gaines. Who is fighting against biological males being placed in female prison? Women. Who is fighting for, the, for 16 years old girls on college campuses and NHS nurses being forced to share changing room with biological men? Those same 16 year old, year, years old girls and NHS nurses. My question is, where are all the men in those women's lives? Where are the fathers, brothers, partners or husbands? Are they too busy worrying about being cancelled or losing their jobs to stand up for the women in their lives? Some causes are worth the risk of losing the job, like protecting their daughters and wives. Protecting and providing has changed. Today, men don't need to fight the other tribes. Protection now means standing up for the women in your life when the government fails to protect them. But no. Men look the other way, absorbing, contemplating their own mental health or saying, you wanted independence, now you protect yourself. Or men are being destroyed. Well, you are destroying yourselves if you can't provide and won't protect when protection is needed. You destroyed yourself by not being able to elevate yourself and look at women as your baseline. You choose dysfunctional behavior over effort. We talk about it in the next. It is not that women are strong. It is that men stayed behind and now they cry about it. 
Just ask yourself the question, why would any woman need you? Or what type of women would need you? If you can't find any answer, you will struggle. Speaking for myself, I prefer a strong partner who does better than I do. Biologically speaking, that's how it ma it's meant to be. And I don't think I'm alone in this. Why do you think so many women struggle to find partners? They, the, the playing field has leveled and we don't want a partner at the same or lower level than we are. What's behind all those childless women in partnerships? Is it really that they don't want children or do they simply not trust an equal partner can provide? What drives the 50% childlessness, childlessness rate? Biologically, it's unlikely that so many women don't want kids. Maybe they do, but they don't trust that their equal partner can protect and provide when it's needed. Women don't have to step aside. Women only have to step aside when men fail to raise the bar. Men don't have mental health issues as long as they feel needed, that they can provide and protect. Unfortunately, these have been taken away from them and some of these roles have voluntarily abdicated. Male depression is treated as female depression, but that's wrong. As one of the podcast hosts said, men are made, feel, made to feel loved and accepted when all they want to do is feel capable and powerful. Unfortunately, women cannot give them that. They have to go and do better because women are marching forward, widening the gap caused by male complacency in the first place and now by self-pity and feminization. Women are pushing their narratives on men at every angle. Behavior at work is feminized. Empathetic leadership. <laughs> Men's well-being and mental health are feminized. They don't bloody need a therapist or support group and all that. They need to feel needed, powerful and competent. But the environment that we are forcing them into does the exact opposite. Boys will be boys. I grew up with very strong alpha males. Women are there to make sure that they don't go too far, but not to stop and eradicate male behavior. Competent women aren't scared of competent male behavior. They know how to handle them. Men and women are different and the balance is in their differences. If we bring the same things to the table, one of us is made redundant, which is clearly happening as women deliver pretty much the same as men, making them redundant. This is what we get when we want to make a woman out of a man, because this is what's happening today. So here is the message. Women, keep marching ahead, but make sure that you don't turn men into women by asking them to behave like us. We don't want that. That's an imbalance. Stop dragging your men into therapy and telling them that they are as good as they are. No, your role is to keep pushing them to be better than you are. Because when they are better than you, they are going to elevate you. Men, step up the game because whatever gave you the power in the past, it's over. Women are more educated, earn pretty much the same and can take care of themselves and the children you left behind. Give us a new challenge. We are at the same level as you are, if not higher. And that's not good for men or women. Consider women as your baseline and do better. <laughs> that's the first article. Oh my God, it's 14 minutes in there. So it's really, this article is talking about the power balance between women. And when it's done beautifully and well, it's really the purpose of it that the couple, that the partners can grow together because strong man is a supportive man also. It's pulling, he is pulling the woman up, helping, guiding, supporting. But when the, the man is at the same level and is not pulling the woman or the woman surpasses the man, it destroys men because this is just not something men can handle. And you can see that men rather sit back. 
the men rather engage in dysfunctional behavior, which is alcohol, drugs, sex, um, domestic violence, abusive relationships, etc., etc. So that's not what we want. Men cannot handle healthy men. And I, I will say that healthy men cannot handle when the woman is doing better than him. And I have zero problem with that. Now, I'm not talking about that part in temporarily, you know, the man is falling behind. That's okay. We, we ups and downs of lives. But constantly, I had a GM, 55 years old. Her, his uh, wife got into a CEO position. She left him for another CEO. And that man could not handle it. I was actually sorry for him. I'm like, man, I just wanted to shake him. I'm like, just stand up because now you need to come out of it. But this destroyed him, his ego. And he's not talking about an ex ex um, excessive ego. It's the male ego. They need to be in the driving seat. And I had no problem with that. So he ended up transforming his whole body because he used to look like a normal guy and now he looks like a really hot guy. But the problem is that he went way too far, didn't stop with the transformation that may have got the wife back, I don't know. But he's engaged constantly in relationship, one relationship, to, you know, hundreds of relationships with 20 years old girls. And once I told him, you are a 55 years old man, that's not healthy. Once he called me his ex-wife's name and we were not close relationship, let alone, and I told him, I'm like, you just did that in front of your PA. Somebody's going to think that we are in an intimate relationship. So this is mess, this messes up men and they engage and they want to take back power. And these are the silly behavior they are going to engage in. And I have seen it many, many times. So don't be surprised when your man is going to control your finances when you are earning money and maybe he is jobless. I've seen it. When your man is going to take control over your social circle or where you can go, when you can leave the house. This is all power because he feels that you might be doing better than him in one of the areas that is important to him. So what happens to women when they end up in relationships like that? Let's go to the next part, the second part. And this is really talking about what women want from men. And once again, it's my and my friend's feedback and based on our conversations, not necessarily applies to you, but biologically speaking, we try to make sense of this mess because everything is rooted in biology and evolution. Now, so in the previous article, we discussed the imbalance that emerged as men have struggled to elevate themselves, creating challenges for both men and women. Today, let, today let's talk about and explore what options remain for women, singlehood or shrinking themselves to fit. I love it when men ask the question, what do women bring to the table? Well, the table you are offering is from IKEA and we can certainly match that standard. Plus, women are higher educated than men. So our question really is, what do men bring to the conversation? More and more women are having this type of conversation, choosing singlehood because men aren't offering anything they don't already have or can't achieve independently. Some may argue that relationships are about love and partnership, which is true. However, the primary reason for relationships has traditionally and biologically been to raise children and build a family structure. Love and partnership, while important, are secondary to biological drive to create a stable environment for children. Without children in the picture and the ability to provide for ourselves, the motivation to enter or stay in relationships diminishes significantly. The incentives just aren't what they used to be. Now, let's talk about what women want. These are my friend, once again, and, and my and my friend's point of view, and you may have different ones. Women generally don't want partners who are less educated, earn less, 
lack ambition or struggle or do worse than the woman professionally speaking. We are not drawn to men who can't protect or provide, who lack intellectual curiosity, social circles, physical activity, or emotional resilience. Men who constantly talk about their misfortunes, sit in therapy sessions to work through their issues, talk about the feelings and emotions, or fall into a victim mentality aren't appealing. Women don't want men who lack conviction, moral principles, or the courage to stand for something. We don't find it attractive when men are forced into submission by corporates, uh, corporate pressures, saying or doing things they don't truly believe in. I have seen it in corporations, and this, this is the most unattractive things you can offer to women. So I don't wonder that there are no relationships forged, forging in corporations, because we are all there. Um, Women aren't drawn to men who can't make decisions or take the lead, who cannot intellectually challenge them or those who walk around with the words pain on their shoulders. Women don't want a man who they need to carry on their own shoulders. We don't find any of these attractive. Why do you think there is a massive decline in sexual activities? Women like power. The power that comes from the differences between her and the man. Women want men they can look up to, learn from, and rely on, who provide safety and security. Men who are assertive, but not aggressive. Women want men who don't break down at the first hurdle life throws at them, ending up in the psychologist's office. We want strong men who carry on and find meaning in the struggles of providing and protecting their families or women instead of crumbling under them. So what happens when women marry someone below her? I know, apparently it is an awful thing to say, but it is true and it happens many, many times. Women enter relationships that are below them or they outgrow them and they stay. For men, it is, re it is the requirement to marry below them. That's the balance I explained previously. That is the natural order, but for women, it can be detrimental. I see women holding themselves ba back shrinking to keep the sense of balance when their growth risks overshadowing a partner who, is keeping, who isn't keeping pace. We do this in instinctively. It's in our biology. It's in our biological wiring to create stability for ourselves and our children. Biology, evolution, and male behavior all play a role when women start excelling. When sense this deeply, we sense this deeply, so we adopt accordingly. We do that naturally. We lower ourselves. That's for our survival. So that's okay, but we need to understand. We adopt by turning down promotions to avoid making our husbands feel uncomfortable. I see so many women staying in relationships where their partners are the ones holding them back. I can't help but think, girl, it's not a vegan diet, retreats, wellness routines, yoga, or meditation that you need. You are just distracting yourself from the truth. You are with a man who can't keep up with, with the speed you want to go with, sorry. <clears throat> what you need is a partner who matches your ambition and ability. Yet, this is what many women do. They keep busy with endless nonsensical activities or embark on a journey to find themselves, when really all they need to find is a man who challenges and raises the bar. You might say it's gold digging and selfish. Let me remind you that there is no gold to dig and we are bringing just as much to the IKEA table you provide. Secondly, I'm not talking about aiming for millionaires. I'm talking about finding someone who is a step above the, women, the woman. Women are the baseline for men. So it will vary for each of us based on what we bring and where we are. Thirdly, and most importantly, if men want women to have children, that, women need, that woman needs reassurance that her partner can provide, protect, and be reliable. That's a simple biology and evolution and has nothing to do with gold digging. Women are vulnerable and exposed to a man when they bring a child into this world. 
She might step away from employment for various reasons, and she must be certain that the man can provide an environment where she can focus on nurturing and raising their child. Women don't want a man who will crumble under such responsibility, leaving her to support and carry him as well. In that case, she doesn't need him. He is just an extra burden she can do without. So no, when women tell you they want you to do better, it's not about gold digging or social climbing. It's about simple biology and failing to understand that could leave you both unhappy in the relationship or single. Women want strong men who uplift them, not those who hold them back or worse, bring them down. And if you find it offensive or surprised by, well, that's probably because you are not capable of raising the bar for yourself as a man. And as a woman, you are probably in one of those relationships. The current system of feminization of men is not doing a favor to anybody, but most importantly to men. No woman wants a feminine, crying yogi guru who talks about the benefits of vegan diet, slow living, stress-free life, empathetic leadership, vulnerability, and their emotions or mental health. Or a one that spends his life on the sofa watching telly or playing games. Yes, women will be there to support their men when support is needed. But we want you to bounce back like a tennis ball and move us forward. Because if you cannot, we will be moving forward with or without you. Are you offended? I hope not. It, these articles meant to help, to understand what women want. And I would really love if you guys, boys out there, men, tell us what you want. Because I understand the state you are in. We caught up. You didn't notice us coming up. And now all of a sudden, we are eye to eye. You lost the power that was given to you by the system. And now you don't know what to do. Nobody has redefined manhood in a modern era. Do you need to provide, providing, protecting, and, and, and you know, creating a family? It looks very different today. So what does it mean to you? How can you make yourself, because by not elevating your game, you're not raising your bar, you basically made yourself redundant to women. Because why would I put up with somebody sitting here when that guy doesn't elevate? Women want men who elevates them. Women want men they can look up to. Women want men who they, they lead, who leads and guides and drives. My psychologist friend said, and she was on point, that take partnerships, marriage, you know, relationships as a job. We gave you the job to lead to show us the direction. And, but if you don't do it, we don't need you. You would get your ass fired even at work. Yes, we love you. That's okay, that's part of it, right? But lead us. I always like when a man leads, and this is how it looks like. You choose the restaurant, you do, you know, you tell us. I'm going with you until it is suitable and it's fine for me. Until, until as long as it's good for me. And when it's not good for me, I'm going to tell you and your role is to adjust so we can move forward, keep moving forward. But now you took into consideration that that's not where I wanted to go to. And that's how I always worked with my father, who is an alpha male. I always fought back because he will lead you to bloody God knows everywhere. <laughs> but I always say, I'm not doing this. Okay, so you need to figure out how you can take your women and your family towards the direction you want to go and they willing to go with you. But if you don't have any direction and they have to take the driving seat, they have to lead, you are giving them the masculine role that you're supposed to do. And now you're upsetting another balance, masculine and feminine. And here I very briefly, I want to talk about the leadership styles because I cannot stand men. I cannot stand them who, is, who are talking about um, compassionate and empathetic leadership style and vulnerability. And it's not even them who, who are talking about it. It's the women who are feminizing the workforce and pushing these agendas on men, this behavior. 
Men are men. Maybe we need to step away from this leadership style altogether because we have individual leadership styles, but maybe we can also agree on that men are more assertive in the leadership style and men maybe are more um, empathetic. Could that be that we don't need to shape men into this empathetic crying babies who are sitting in a psychologist office and therapist and in you know support group circles and now we don't we look at them like weak. Now they lost the game and we forced them to do this. All the data are declining, marriage, childbirth, you know, intimacy between couples. Why do you think it is? We no longer look at men, find them attractive. Because we made women out of them. And boys, men, keep up because we really want you to lead us. We are there. It's a partnership. We bring, we bring the emotional part. You guys bring the logical part and all that. Now, it doesn't mean that every woman is emotional. Generally speaking, we are more empathetic, right? Because of the personality trait in order to raise the children. That's, that's our role in society. But everything has been taken away and everybody is, you know, the same. Of course, we both, both success are struggling. Be women can't find men. Men can't find women. Singleness, loneliness. And then we feed ourselves with stupid TikTok videos and stories that we are very happy like that. Yeah, we are.